Um, I just had a question about um, ritual. You mentioned the Terence method and everything. Um, Disgraceful, but yes. yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's good advice. But So I was wondering what other rituals you do repetitively other than just like the normal brushing your teeth kind. But do you, you mean in <laughs> my personal life? Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you do every day or every other, you know? Month that you month. Just I spend as, <laughs> as many hours a day as I possibly can uh, smoking cannabis. <laughs> this is a practice this is the that secret of McKenna's philosophy. Thank you very much, people. Uh, this is a practice now. that I've adhered to since my 17th summer, and. Uh, you know, God knows if I put in the same amount of time on yoga or writing plays. Uh, I also throw the I Ching at the new and full moon. <laughs> what am I doing to decriminalize it? <laughs> well, I always talk about it whenever anybody asks. It's funny how rarely how rarely the subject comes up, even in groups like this. It's almost as though marijuana is the poor country cousin. We're all here talking Slightly about 5 methoxy, hydroxy, this and that. And uh, the lowly cannabis weed, which has been with us uh, since before the Vedas were a gleam in some Indo-European warlord's eye. Uh, it's very interesting how the metaphors of cordage are also the metaphors of creativity, that we weave a story and we spin a yarn. And uh, all the connection between fibers and, uh, and cognitive processes has always been well understood. I think cannabis has a bum rap. What I'm doing to decriminalize it is being fairly out front about my devotion to it. I just think it's trivial and silly, and it's like trying to outlaw masturbation or something. It has to do with having a, a torqued notion of human nature. Uh, these things exist. Uh, I mean, I'm not recommending that for everyone, but when I was young, I was what's called a nervous child. And uh, the first time I had a hit of cannabis, I realized that I could self-medicate myself to normalcy and uh, be just like everybody else. And, uh, and so I did that. And uh, I don't know if it's the proper place to tell it, but... Once I became concerned that I did too much smoking, and uh, so I decided I would quit. First of all, I wanted to see if I could quit, and then I wanted to see how much of my interior life was actually riding on this ocean of cannabis ingestion. So it so happened that the conditions for the experiment were perfect because I was arriving on a small desert island uh, in the Seychelles group in the Indian Ocean and had rented a house on this island in order to write a book. So I uh, had this Mombasan bomber weed and a lid of it and I just rolled it up and nailed it above my kitchen door and decided that I would not smoke until I had finished writing this book. and. Uh, was relieved to learn that I had enough self-control that this was possible. I mean, I didn't sleep a wink for eight nights, but uh, I, I did not resort to breaking my pledge. And, uh, and I slowly realized it was all right. What it seemed to do was I spent a lot more time reading and had much more interesting dreams, and otherwise it didn't seem to be any big deal. And I wrote this book then and it took me about six weeks and I promised myself that when the book was finished I would then allow myself to smoke up this lid of weed before I left this island so finally I finished and I was very diligent I wrote every day at 8 a.m. for till noon I typed and then I would take my dogs and explore this island I had this very set regimen and finally the book was finished 
and uh, I roll these huge bombers and drag my lawn chair out under the coconut palms and waited for the sunset to get really going and then I just flared and consumed about three of these things in about five minutes and I was just waiting for this sense of relief and accomplishment and uh, clarity to sweep over me and this thing began to happen and I like pushed it away and then it came back and I pushed it away and finally I realized I had to look at what this was that it was just becoming overwhelming and then I looked at it and what it was was it was the incontrovertible instantaneous deep unarguable realization that this book I had written was dog shit <laughs> and I was just frozen with there, you know, just sitting in this chair, quaking with this realization. And up to a half an hour ago, I had this vision of myself returning triumphantly to Berkeley like Lenin entering Moscow with the tome raised high. Don't worry, brothers and sisters, it's all figured out. And I realized, you know, that it was a catastrophe, an abortion, a monstrosity. So I just was, you know, really set back. So then I just shrugged my shoulders and said, oh, okay. I will smoke day and night until I can try and save this thing, if it can be saved. And I did. I mean, I, I did smoke day and night, and I did struggle with this thing. And it was not possible to breathe life into that corpse. This, this book, I'll just tell you the title in order to convince you that this thing should have died a borning. It was called... <clears throat> I blush to tell you. It was called Crypto Rap, Meta, meta Electrical Speculations on Culture. <laughs> terrible, terrible. So I realized then, at that point, that I was a fool to try to navigate life without cannabis and that it would just get me in terrific trouble and that I lost my way and couldn't make judgments. And I'd